So good afternoon. Uh, let me talk about a little bit about my PhD project, which is about improving acute pancreatitis management. My name is Dorotya Tarjan, and I'm a gastroenterological resident and a PhD student. My vision is to contribute to clear uh, guidelines through improving the management of acute pancreatitis. Uh, for that, I have three specific goals. The first one is about identifying early predictors for infected necrosis in acute pancreatitis. This is a systematic review and a meta-analysis. My second one is investigating the safety and effectiveness of keratistectomy in pregnant women with acute pancreatitis. This is an international survey and a register analysis. The third one is about acute pancreatitis severity uh, prediction. It's time to use artificial intelligence. This is a perspective article with case reports. So let me talk about a little bit more about my first topic. So among acute pancreatitis, 20% of patients develop necrotizing pancreatitis. Secondary infection of the necrotic tissue is a severe condition with increased morbidity and mortality, requiring antibiotic treatment or even invasive interventions. The risk of organ failure is three times higher, and the risk of mortality is two times higher compared to sterile necrosis. However, early predictors allowing the initiation of an early therapy have not been uh, established yet. Therefore, our aim is to identify early predictors for infected necrosis in acute pancreatitis. Our critical question is which parameters can predict early infection in necrotizing acute pancreatitis? For that, we use the PEERD uh, framework. Our population is patients with necrotizing acute pancreatitis. For index tests, we involved any laboratory biomarkers that were measured between the two groups. Our reference test is CT imaging with the presence of gas in the necrotic collection or by examination of the sample acquired by the intervention using gram staining or culture. And our outcome is infection. Our hypothesis was that there are early predictors for infected necrosis in acute pancreatitis. We conducted a systematic search in three databases and through the process, we got 14 eligible articles. So this is my first uh, forest plot for the R under the curve for the C-reactive protein. As you can see, we were able to do a subgroup analysis based on the time of the measurement of the laboratory parameters. The heterogeneity was low between the two subgroups. So what you should know about AUC, that if it is one, it means that we can be 100 sure that our prediction is current. And if it's 0.5, we can be sure for like three people uh, flipping a coin that we are 50% sure that we are correct. So as you can see, for the early phase, within the first three days, the AUC was 0 uh, 0.69, which has a low accuracy. Therefore, we cannot use it for clinical settings. However, in the late phase, it was 0 0.88, which is quite good. For the prokaryotic tonin, uh, we got similar results. As you can see, the AUC for the early phase was also 0 0.69, and for the late phase, it was 0 0.86. And we also got a forest plot for the white blood cell count, which was the lowest accuracy. It was only 0 0.61. In this, uh, you can see the rock curve for the early phase for the procalcitonin and the CRP. And as you can see, both of them has low accuracy, but the procalcitonin is slightly better. So the strength of uh, my meta-analysis is that this is the first one which includes subgroup analysis based on different time intervals, and there is no significant heterogeneity between the subgroups. The limitation is that we on only have a small number of observational studies that we were able to conclude. So the conclusion is, in the first three days, the serum measurement of CRP and procalcitonin could be elevated without the presence of infection. Their elevated level in the late phase could be associated with infection. So if they stay elevated for the late phase, it, we should intensify our monitoring these patients, and even may, may, we can recommend to start antibiotic use. Um, there is an implication for further research. More follow-up studies needed to investigate multiple laboratory parameters and clinical parameters for these patients. Uh, and we need to develop more uh, multivariate prediction scores. So I'm, in this uh, slide, you can see in the first project status, I'm currently working on the manuscript, and I hope I will be able to finish it this summer. 
So my second topic is about investigating the safety and effectiveness of cholecystectomy in pregnant women with acute pancreatitis. This is a registered analysis and an international survey balancing women biliary pancreatitis, the burn study. Uh, acute pancreatitis during pregnancy is a rare event, and while most of the cases are mild, resolving within two days, 20% of the cases will be severe. The most common cause is cholelithiasis. Uh, acute biliary pancreatitis related to pregnancy has a relatively high recurrence rate, 70%. Index cholecystectomy in the general um, population um, is suggested based on um, randomized control type, uh, trials to reduce the reoccurrence rate. However, there are no guidelines currently available for the management of pregnant women acute pancreatitis, but there is a low-grade evidence that if a pregnant patient has symptomatic uh, cholelithiasis, they should uh, undergo cholecystectomy. Therefore, our aim is to investigate the safety and effectiveness of index cholecystectomy in pregnant women. Our clinical question is, is index cholecystectomy safe in pregnant women with acute pancreatitis? Our population is, of course, pregnant women with biliary acute pancreatitis. For in exposure, we're looking for index cholecystectomy, and we're looking for outcomes such as mortality, preterm delivery, recurrence rate, severity, and the need for ERCP. Our hypothesis is index cholecystectomy is safe and reduces the, the recurrence rate of acute pancre biliary pancreatitis. Currently, there is um, 34 participating uh, centers worldwide, and some of them already sent us data back. So, my third topic is about acute pancreatitis severity prediction. It's time to use artificial intelligence. Uh, so the, the course of acute pancreatitis can be very variable depending on the course of the uh, disease. So for risk assessment, we have three tools. The first is univariate biomarkers such as uh, CRP and creatinine, which all has low accuracy and therefore we cannot use in our everyday life. However, in the there are multivariate score systems such as the BISAP and the Apache scores, um, which usually require more than one uh, parameter that not measured in everyday laboratory uh, parameters, and they also need more than one day to be able to fulfill. So there is a next step, there is artificial intelligence. This can detect complex nonlinear relationships between uh, continuous biolaboratory parameters and disease outcomes. So just such as we can use the easy app, uh, which is able to calculate a risk score between 0 and 1 while explaining the prediction of the machine learning model. This is a free web-based uh, application which not requires all the parameters. They are all measured at the daily routine. So there is, we can use it early and easy at the time of the admission. And since it uses continuous parameters, there are no information loss. And since it's artificial intelligence, it has the capability to continuously improve itself. And it was already published this year, December. So as such as an overview of my topics, the first one, um, I'm currently write, uh, working on the manuscript and it will be finished this summer and I plan to submit in December, uh, September. And for the second uh, topic, there is currently I'm waiting for data back as an international survey. And as the third one was already published this year, December. Thank you for your attention. Let me finish with a quote. I uh, hope it's the thing with feathers. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Uh, for your second study, uh, I really hope that with a, a larger number of uh, cases, uh, you will have a, a strong evidence, and um, and uh, we can uh, uh, we can have a very nice uh, take-home message to all uh, gynecologists, um, uh, gastroenterologists, and surgeons: uh, what to do with a uh, pregnant uh, woman with uh, a biliary uh, disease. With gallbladder uh, problems, uh, when to operate, how to operate, and so on. I really hope you will uh, uh, send us a very good result.
Yes, I am also really hoping, I also think that this is a really interesting question about when the patient early has uh, symptoms and complaints, how to manage this uh, uh, patients. Dorka, do you, do you want to go to your, to your, one of the closing slides on the second project where you say this is our primary outcome? So your hypothesis index cholecystectomy is safe and reduces the recurrence rate of biliary acute pancreatitis. So you, you, you are probably aware of the Poncho trial. Yeah. And from that, we know that index cholecystectomy is, can reduce the reoccurrence of, of acute biliary pancreatitis and some biliary complications as well. I really miss from this hypothesis, the most important bit of the, the trial is this safe from the from from the newborn's point of view is this safe from the labor point of view doing an operation just before someone is you know being mm -hmm. born so thank you for your suggestion this is the, like we have more questions about in this survey about the newborn for it made for the icu if it has any small gestational age or like any complication i think i phrased badly because we are looking for if the next uh, episode of acute pancreatitis has worse outcomes or if the patients undergo surgery, maybe that has worse outcomes. And since there is low grade evidence that surgery is safe and, and don't affect the pregnancy, we are still looking for like these questions, like how often if this is really uh, done, this procedure. Mm -hmm. And do you think we need data to prove that that uh, if we delay the cholecystectomy in pregnant lady that they will not have an increased uh, risk of recurrence? I think we kind Can of we not extrapolate the data from the, from the Poncho trial to this subgroup of patients? And if we can't, why can we not? I think there is a hesitancy in people to perform surgery in pregnant women, even if the li literature says it's safe because everyone is afraid to operate a pregnant women because there is a, they're afraid that there is a high risk for, for the operation for the uh, baby. So I think what we try to show with this trial that if it's really no difference in the outcome of the pregnancy and there is could be a, even a higher chance of to be a poor outcome if we didn't do the surgery. Thank you for the presentation. I would like to ask you a question about your third project. So uh, just to, to clarify, so are you um, planning to use other uh, prediction tools besides EasyApp to make a comparison whether this actually is better than some more simple ones? Um, so since it uses m uh, more parameters, it can be better to give us more, more personal, more personalized information regarding the patients. But currently in China, also in the development of other artificial intelligence-based application, which um, we don't have data which one is better because they haven't been like compared. Mm 